Hey everyone, how is it going? Today, I thought I'd talk about something that I've had a few questions on lately, and that is my trip to Vegas that I took a few weeks ago, probably closer to a month ago now, uh, to visit David and help sort out his collection. Main question I get is, why was I doing it? You know, why was I out there sorting David's collection for him? Why was David not sorting the collection himself? What did I bring to the table? So, I figured I'd go over it a bit, exactly what I did, uh, how we sorted out his collection, why it needed sorting. First off, for people who don't know who David is, he is the owner of the most complete English Pokemon card collection in the world, with the end goal of owning one copy of every single Pokemon card. Every variant, every minor, minor detail needs to go into his collection. Obviously, the crown jewel of his collection is owning every single World Championships trophy card, first through fourth place, or first through third in the years that had that. You may have seen this photo that I took floating around uh, the internet. A few people have post reposted it in a few different places, and obviously we did a video while I was out there in which we showed off every trophy card together. So first off, why did it need sorting out? Well, David just got a bit behind on it. You know, he's a busy guy, he works, he coaches basketball. He has a lot of stuff going on. Uh, they moved fairly recently. And with all of that going on, he just got behind on getting his collection sorted. And as I know better than anyone, once you get behind on having your collection sorted, it takes so long to catch up. And he really just didn't have the time. So it was actually around the start of Sword and Shield era, probably about at the start of the pandemic, where he just stopped being able to put all of the variants and stuff together. Now, while he wasn't staying fully up to date with this stuff, there were a couple of big things that he did still do towards the collection. First was obviously getting all of those rare cards, like the trophy cards, any of the world stamped cards, or IC promos he tried to keep on top of as well. Anything like that, we tried to make sure we were getting him. We all knew, all of us who helped David uh, put together the stuff and middle sales and stuff for him, we knew that there was going to be stuff missing, but we wanted to make sure that the rarest and hardest to find stuff was taken care of, which we did manage. Second of all was that David was still buying complete sets. For people who don't know, David's never opened a booster pack. He's never tried to build a set himself. He just buys 100% complete full sets. Everything you can pull from booster packs, he just buys in one go. Sometimes those will come with some variants, depending on who he's buying them from, but generally it is just making sure that the stuff from the booster packs is locked up. So, why was I going to visit? Well, start off, I was taking some cards over for him. I did film that real quick before I actually left, so let's jump to that and I'll show exactly what I uh, was taking over for him. So, before I jump on the plane to Vegas, I wanted to show off what kind of a little care package I'm taking over to David. So, we're starting out strong. This is a double colorless energy champion stamp from the latin america internationals this is the only time that the latin america internationals actually received english language cards they received portuguese for every year afterwards and this ended up being the only one of the four champion dces that david was missing luckily i was able to help him pick this one up a couple of months back this one came from uh, my friend Thunderboo, who was... He had three out of the four as well, and sold off a couple of them just to keep one. I think he just kept the North America champion, and worked out quite well, so David was able to pick this one up. Now, as see, people will know David was not able to make it to the World Championships in London in 2022. He did grab most of the cards. Uh, he was just missing a couple. He was still missing the staff promo, which I have been able to get for him here. I think we just... Uh, Managed to trade off an extra of another card somewhere for that one. And we've got the number three trainer from that year. So this was the last trophy card he was missing from prior to this year. He just, I think none of the winners had wanted to sell for a little while. The contacts we've made said they were hanging on to them. And then we just managed to make a very good offer on one. And uh, Laura actually picked this one up from a regionals from the winner. So we've got that one going out for him. Then, of course, David also could not make it to Worlds in Yokohama, so I have pretty much all of his Worlds stuff here, apart from one card, which I'll talk about in a moment. I do have a sealed player packs for him on this one, but they're all actually bubble-wrapped and packed up rather than just being top loaders. So the staff promo here, we have two top 32s. He bought from a couple of winners and ended up buying the, the stamp runs for a few different people. Two top 16s. 
a quarter finalist. Oh, sorry, two quarter finalists still. Uh, one semi finalist, and then one champion card. So the only one we don't have here is the finalist. Uh, but David does have that one. I think he made a big video about buying the finalist from Todd a little while back. And of course, this was a weird year where the champion didn't get finalist and semi finalist. They got champion and then quarter finalist down at top thirty two. Similarly, the people who got finalist didn't get semi finalist. It was a it was a bit of a weird year for that, but that's the way they did it. But luckily, he does now have all of the paradise results. And of course, the World 2023 collection would not be complete without the trophy cards. So we have the number four trainer. These, of course, all are all new artwork for 2022. It's another different style of full art. I'm assuming we'll see this for a, a few years going forward with a very, very cool set. And then the number three there, of course, well, we got, got both of these on site during the tournament. I think we've got the number four on the Saturday night and then the number three on the Sunday morning. Uh, the number two took a little bit more negotiation. Um, we ended up, well, so we, I ended up having to go traveling through Tokyo to go and meet one of the winners uh, of the number two, and we're able to get this one. Uh, th that's the reason we don't have a finalist, is because they were comfortable selling the trophy, the number two, they said as long as they could keep the finalist just as kind of a memento of where they actually finished, with it being worth a lot less than the trophy card, getting the amount of money they did for the trophy they were fine hanging on to the finalist. And then, of course, we have the number one. This was the only one that we did not get on site at Worlds. I got this a couple of months later when I actually went to visit uh, back in the UK for my brother's wedding. Talked about that. I had to fly down to London pretty much the day after arriving. I say the day after arriving, like six hours after arriving. I was back on a plane down to London again to meet someone to pick this up. I actually picked up the champion at the same time, too. So when I actually left Japan, we were missing the number one, the champion, and the finalist, which, you know, it's a pretty it's pretty good showing having three of the trophy cards, but missing the number one is always a... It's a bit of a stinger. We always want the number one where we can get it, but luckily it was not too much longer. We were able to pick that one up, and he is now complete again, fully complete on trophies. Another big thing I've been helping David with are Professor Cup promos. So the Professor program, cards you've seen it around before, they get out, go out for a lot of different Professor events basically press get a lot but the ones for the cup come in multiple different versions so you have the normal one which is a player version we then have a staff version so staff version of friends and galar this one is actually incredibly rare because for some reason for the first year that they did the professor cup staffs only went out to the organizers of the event so there was one staff promo per professor cup so there's seven or eight staff promos maybe of this one um they're as rare as the champion so it's a very very rare card glad we look at that one the top eight obviously a little bit more common than the staff version because eight players per event got it and david does actually already have the champion version he has that one at his home already so i didn't need to bring that one the second year of the presser cup had two different promos um but they're a little bit more common for a couple of reasons um one there's just a few more professor cups running Second of all, the staffs were given out to a lot of staff members who worked there rather than just one for the organizer. And also, they didn't run combined top eights anymore. So, um, previously for the first year when they did the Friends in Galar, it would be they'd play it out, they'd play TCG, BGC, or Go, and it would just be the top eight players combined would get eight top eights and one champion. Whereas with this one, whenever they run a Professor Cup, um, it's 24 top eights and three champions. So we have the regular Friends in Sinnoh, the staff, top eight, and champion. And then the other one that ran alongside it was friends in high Sue. So there we have the regular, the staff, top eight, and champion. Last but not least, we actually have a nice few ultra balls. So this is from internationals in Europe. We have the top eight and the champion ultra ball here. I know that some of these Ultra Balls are some of the last few David's still missing. I need to get into his collection when I get there. And that's one of the big things I want to make a checklist on is just making sure we know what he's still missing. Because I know with North America in the Nats, um, they didn't give out the champion of the top eight on site. So even though I was there, I wasn't able to get any of them, which is irritating. But I'm sure we're going to know for definite <laughs> by the end of my trip what he still needs. And then finally, two more Ultra Balls. We have... Pokemon Championships Singapore. So you may have seen me and David talking about the uh, the Chen Pao EXs that we're currently trying to get a hold of at the moment. 
Uh, David has Malaysia, and we've got Singapore on the way. Still need Hong Kong and the Philippines for Chen Pao. But this is from the previous year, and these are a bit rarer, because you know, Chen Pao went out the top four of these regionals, but they ran age divisions, so each regional gave out 12, and there were also, there's been at least two regionals so far that have given out the same Chen Pao, but for these there was only one regionals, or it's kind of worked like a nationals, that gave out these, and there was only one age division, so there are eight of this Ultra Ball. Actually, no, there are seven of this Ultra Ball, because the champion did not receive a top eight one, they only received the champion one. So there are seven of this Ultra Ball in existence, this is the Singapore top eight, and then the rarest card I'm taking to David, the rarest card I'll ever hold in my hands, the one of one champion Singapore Ultra Ball. Now, obviously, similar with the Chen Powers, there are four different countries running this, and David has the Singapore now, because I'm taking that to him, and he does already have the Philippines one. We're still holding out hope on Malaysia and Hong Kong EN. We have some contact in Malaysia who are helping us try and look, but... I mean, if you know anyone in Hong Kong who knows who won the English tournament in Hong Kong, there are actually, Hong Kong has two different tournament scenes running. One in, it's in some form of Chinese, I believe it's traditional Chinese, and then there's one in English, so it's Hong Kong EN. If you know who won that one, send them over our way for a big payday. But that is the final piece that's going over. So once it came down to actually sorting out the collection that he had there, first thing to do was I needed to take inventory. I needed to go through all of those set binders, figure out which ones had variants, which ones had promos in, pull out all of the promos and variants basically to make sure they were all spaced out correctly within the binders so we knew where we were putting other variants. While David wasn't, you know, putting together the set to Black Star promos or pulling all of the variants, he was, for the most part, still buying all of the box sets and stuff that come with these promos. So there was a ton just around the office that I needed to figure out what did we need to open to start pulling packs out of or pull the promos out of and make a big stack of packs as it was by, by the end of things. And then it was just work out what else was around, you know, the, his office is crazy. It it was so unorganized when I got there. One of the big things which we did mention on a podcast recently was this 5,000 count box. And I had to go through everything in that box because there were cards he'd gotten in which he didn't know he needed them as variants. He didn't know where they were supposed to go. He just knew he had to buy them and they ended up in that box. The biggest thing I found in that box, as we have said on the podcast, was a champion stamped... NAIC promo from last year. The Ultra Ball, the winner's card, only six copies given out. He'd bought one from someone because he knew it was rare, he knew we were going to need it eventually, but it had somehow just ended up in that box. So in order to try and find out exactly what was missing, it came down to a couple of things. I started working off the variants list from Bulbapedia, and then if I noticed anything was missing from Bulbapedia, just from cards that I know exist, because I, I generally have a pretty good memory for what cards have come out. I obviously couldn't go through and list off everything like on Bulbapedia, but I'm at a point where it will flag up to me if I know there's something that should be on a list that isn't. And as I was going through the Bulbapedia lists, I was messaging Nathan from Bulbapedia uh, anytime I saw that something was missing in order to make sure that it was added on. Really, the main thing that was missing, it seemed to be, from the Bulbapedia list were Professor promos. Um, I guess those come out, they don't get a lot of fanfare when they're coming out. They will slip under the radar quite a bit. A lot of people obviously just not notice them when they do show up. And so this, this was the extent of my notes. This was all of my scribbling down stuff as we went. And I said, David, I said, I need a notebook. I said, I'm not starting this just on the computer. I said, I need to be able to write something down. I need to tear pages out. I need to spread them around. I just need to have my process to get things figured out. As I was going through and making those lists, I was sorting the binders and putting stuff into the binders where they should be. You know, with the variants, I was making sure we were leaving the correct amount of gaps for all the stuff that he didn't have. Same with the Black Star promo binder, which was honestly pretty empty still by the time I'd opened everything we got. We did then sit for basically a couple of hours at a time, two or three times during the week, 
uh, to just go and order stuff from eBay. I was just giving Dave card numbers sets, and he was pulling up all of these just random small cards that he was missing. The vast, vast majority of cards he was ordering that weekend were in the 2 or $3 range, you know. There was a couple of slightly higher priced ones. We knocked a couple of staff promos off, but for the majority of it, let's say it was just these smaller cards that were missed. And in just those couple of eBay sessions, just by typing it in, clicking buy it now, we knocked off about 80-90% of the cards that he was missing. Really, the only things we left out were things where the variation he's missing is some sort of change to the foil, some really subtle change, where you kind of have to be looking at the card in person to see it. This is stuff like Smooth versus Pixel Cosmos foil, which I've talked about a few times. I want to kind of see those in person if I can, or at least make a post in like Facebook group or something, or make a video like this at some point where I can properly distinguish which one we're wanting to buy rather than just having to base it off a picture from an ebay listing there were some things too that we kind of held off on ordering just if we felt that we could get them cheaper somewhere else you know there was some of those staff promos and judge promos i just felt we can definitely talk to people i know and just get them a bit cheaper later you know, even if the cards were easily available on eBay or TCG Player, we're not going to pay $20, $30 more than what we should, what I know that they go for when they change hands. I think a lot of people have the wrong impression about David because of the fact that he does pay very, very large amounts of money for things like the trophy cards, but he's never looking to go crazy. He will only pay what he has to to get the card. Like, just because he's spending tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousand on a trophy card, on one card, doesn't mean he's then going to go and buy a $60 card for $100. He's just not that kind of person. He's not someone who wants to be throwing his money about. He wants to be very, very careful and, you know, get stuff for the best price he can. Last thing I ended up doing was we set up a Google Sheet so that I could put in everything that was missing, everything that we'd ordered, so that David knew what was arriving, where it needed to go in his binders when it did arrive, and so that we can keep it up to date and we can add more stuff as it comes out. I did start off the Google Sheets when I was there, but I had to finish it off at home. I mean, I was only there for a week, and there was, you know, 25 years of cards to go through in inventory. I did kind of know what was in store for me when I was going out because of the fact that I did go and visit Dave about a year ago. It was uh, January last year I went out, but that was just to take out some trophy cards, and I was there for about 48 hours, like, from plane touching down to leaving again. There really wasn't time to properly get into the binders and start sorting stuff. We went through, I think, some of the EX era last time where he was mostly done and we were just double-checking a few variants and stuff, but we definitely didn't have time then to go through a whole era. So as for what's still missing from David's collection, which we need to work on, there are actually a few uh, IC promos he's missing, but they're actually the double colorless energy ones from way back in the day, the very first ICs that had these promos. He does have all the champions now, as as you saw in the video, I took the final champion that he was needing, but he needs an Internationals Top 8, uh, International Staff, and a Latin American Player 1. So those are a, a pretty big one that we still need to cross off the list. Uh, other than that, the main thing is the Asian promos, which we've talked about a lot, the English language promos released only in Asia, uh, Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, and Hong Kong um, have their own special promos with logos on. We have quite a lot of those. I say we. It's David's collection, but I'm taking some credit for it. Uh, but there's still a few of those we're working on, which are making some contacts over there. And the final big thing is the prize packs. The reason we didn't go through and just start ordering all of those is because I know I've opened quite a few prize packs. I just haven't got my stuff sorted yet. <laughs> it's all here in boxes. So I said to David, you know, don't go and order stuff yet. Let me sort out what I've got, figure out what I have extra copies of, and then once I've done that, we'll start trying to properly put the sets together. So that's kind of my goal for the next couple of weeks, actually, because I have some card shows coming up and I want them sorted before then. So that's kind of where we're at. You know, uh, we may do just a video at some point going through a list of exactly what he needs to try and get stuff in. There's a few more things I need to check off first before we get to that point. I'm fully expecting this is not going to be the last time I go out and have to help David organize his collection, but hopefully now it should be in a much more manageable place where David can sort of try and keep up to date with it as it's going, and then I can just jump back in and make some adjustments and figure out a few things um, 
whenever I next have to go over. David's hopefully going to be able to make it out to Worlds in Hawaii this year, so it will mean I don't have to be running around with trophy cards and stuff for him. Uh, but if he's not, you know, if he can't make it to Hawaii, then I probably will have to fly in with trophy cards. We'll we'll figure that one out uh, closer to the time. So obviously me going out there really, really helps David out and helps him get that collection sorted, but it is just really, really cool for me to do. I really enjoy doing it because I'm getting to sort and look at some cards that I'm never going to own. You know, that full set of Worlds trophies, you're never going to see that again. I'm probably, I mean, I know I'm one of four or five people to actually see that in person. You know, it was anyone who came into the room when we laid that out that are the only people who've seen that in person. It's me, David, David's wife Stephanie, my wife Laura, and I think one of his kids maybe came in when we had it out. No one else has seen that full set out in person because it hasn't been complete up until now. But even on top of that, we're just talking champion cards, finalist cards, just other really, really cool rare items that you just don't see and I know are out of my price range. Maybe next time I go and visit David, we'll have less to do in terms of sorting, so we'll have a bit more time to properly film and document the collection. Fingers crossed, you know, if I go out in about a year's time again, hopefully he can't mess it up too much in a year. But until then, I have my own collection to be working on. I did actually do some of that today, sorted through some of my Scarlet Violet variants, got those all put away finally. But hey... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing a little bit of extra footage of just what goes on in David's office in that ridiculous 5,000 count box. Me and David will be back again very, very soon, next couple of days with another Coffee Talks podcast episode, and then hopefully every week after that too, and we have more interesting videos and stuff coming in between then. So hopefully you stick around, hopefully you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all soon. We would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who chooses to support the DJ Gigabyte channel on Patreon. Join us to help out and get a look behind the scenes. Thanks for watching. Check out some more videos right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome Pokemon content from DJ Gigabyte. Gotta, Gotta catch, catch them all! all. <laughs>